Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is lesson 2.1 for pre-algebra. Please get out your notebooks and let's start taking some notes. Don't forget to title your notebook page lesson 2.1. Today we're going to talk about some properties of addition and multiplication. You're going to want to write this in your key concepts section of your notebook. You may want to pause the video and copy this down and then listen to me talk through it after you have it copied in your notes. So now would be a good time to pause the video. All right, welcome back. The first property that we're going to talk about is the commutative property of addition and multiplication. So the commutative property means that you are moving. So what happens to the numbers is they're moving around or they're moving order. So here you look at 6 times 4 and here the order switched 4 times 6. So you can kind of think of it as going to school from home and then going back to school, going back home from school. So you're just switching the order that you're doing things. You're going to end up with the same answer because 6 plus 4 we know is equal to 10 and 4 plus 6 we know is equal to 10. Over here the algebra side, this is just giving you the general rule that would work for any number. So they're saying A plus B is the same as B plus A. So the first number plus the second number, you could reverse it the second number plus the first number. You're going to get the same answer. The same thing applies for multiplication. You can move the numbers around and still get the same answer. So 9 times 5 we know is 45. We switch the order and we multiply 4 times 9 and we get 45. So it doesn't matter. You can multiply numbers or add numbers in any order and you're going to get the same answer. And that only works for addition and multiplication. Same thing for the associative properties of addition and multiplication. They only apply when you add or multiply. What this is saying, the associative property, is how you group numbers or who you're associated with. So the parentheses tell us how the numbers are grouped. So over here we have 2 plus 7, which we know is 9. They are associated or grouped together. When we add 9 then to 3, we get 12 for an answer on the left-hand side. Now is that going to be the same over here? On the right-hand side we group 7 and 3, which is 10. Then we add the 2, which is equal to 12. So we can see here that by grouping the numbers in different, if we associate the numbers in different groupings, you're going to end up with the same answer. And that's what this is saying over here on the algebra side. It's saying if you take the first number plus the second number, add that together first, and then add the third number, it's the same as if you add the second and third number first, and then add the first number back onto it. So it's just a different way, so you're not always following um, going from left to right. It makes you do what's at the end first and what's at the beginning last. So here the grouping is the same. 9 times 4 is 36, and you multiply it by 5, which is 180. But over here, these are grouped together or associated together, so we have 9 times 20, which is 180. So you still get the same answer. The last property are the identity properties of addition. And the identity, when you have the identity property, it just shows what you are. So pause the video, copy this down, and then we'll quick talk about the two identity numbers for addition and multiplication. Okay, so the sum of any number in zero is the original number. So what that's saying is you have to remember for adding the identity number is zero because when any, whenever you add zero to a number you're still going to get the same number for an answer. So 12 plus zero is 12. It's the same number. So this is the identity number It's called the additive identity. And then for multiplication, 1, anytime you multiply a number by 1, you're always going to get that number for an answer. So 10 times 1 is 10. So 1 is what's called the 
multiplicative, I hope I spelled that right, identity. So make sure you have this in your key concepts section. So let's look at how are we going to identify what property is shown. So here we have 5 times 7 equals 7 times 5. So we're switching the order. So that would be the commutative property of multiplication. And you have to remember that you have to put out, you can't just say commutative property. You have to say what operation are you doing. So because we're multiplying, we need to say that it's the commutative property of multiplication. So here we have c times 1 equals c. So we know that it's multiplication. And remember, you're getting the same number, so it's going to be the identity property of multiplication. Here we have 7 plus a equals a plus 7. So we know that it's addition. We're switching the order of the numbers, 7 and a, and then it's a and 7. So that's going to be the commutative property of, and remember we have to put what operation we're doing, addition. Now here we have parentheses, it's the way the numbers are grouped. So here we have x and y grouped together. Here we have 5 and x. And we're multiplying, so it's grouping, so it is the associative property of multiplication. I want you to pause the video and I want you to try these three problems on your own. All right, welcome back. Let's see what we got here. 3 plus 6 is equal to 6 plus 3. We're adding, so we know it's addition. The numbers are switching order, so this is the commutative property of addition. I'm just abbreviating some of these words to save time. Here we're multiplying in letter B, so we know that it's going to be multiplication. We're multiplying by 1, and remember that's the identity number, so this is called the identity property of multiplication. Again, abbreviating to save time. And finally, letter C, we have parentheses, and that right away should give away that we're, we're dealing with the associative property, and because we're multiplying, this would be the associative property of multiplication. All right, let's see how we can apply these properties to problems. It's going to really help us do mental math. So I'm going to write out what I'm thinking in my head when I do these problems. So if I look at this problem here and I say, well, it's easier for me to add 6 and 14 together first, so I'm using the associative property there because I'm grouping different numbers and I'm moving them around, so that's the commutative. I know that's 20, and then 20 plus 7 is 27. So we can move numbers around and add them in different orders to make the problems easier. So here, I know that when I add zero, I'm gonna get the same number, so I can almost ignore that zero, but I know that eight plus two is 10, and then if I add negative seven, I end up with their opposite sign, so I'm gonna subtract and take the sign of the bigger number, which is 10, and then I still have that plus zero, but because of the addition property, there are the identity property of addition, we know that three plus zero is three. Now in this problem here, I wanna look for what are some easy numbers that I can, in my head, add together to make this problem simpler. So I know that five plus five is 10, and in my head I know that 12 plus 18 equals 30. So the answer to that problem is 40. So I've moved numbers around and I've regrouped them, so I'm applying those commutative and associative properties. So this problem over here, I want to, you always want to look for numbers that you can add that equal 
like 10, 20, 30, 40, something like that. So I know that I can add those two together, 19 and 21, and I get 40. And then I have 40 plus negative 30, which is going to be 10. Now let's look at some multiplication problems here. I want to look for ways to make the problem simpler without having to use my calculator. Here, if I did this 25 times 3 and then multiply by 4, I'm going to have to use a calculator or write out the multiplication. Where here I could rewrite the problem and say 25 times 4 and then times 3. And I know 25 times 4 is 100 and 100 times 3 is 300. Something I can, this is the thought that's going on in my head and I don't need to do all the multiplication out on the side like 25 times 3 is 70, 75 and then writing out 75 times 4. That takes a lot of time. This I can just do quickly in my head. So I want to look for numbers that I can multiply together to get products that equal like 10, 20, 30, 40, something like that. So I'm going to look at this here and I know that negative 5 times 8 is negative 40. So I have 3 times 1 times negative 40. And I know when I multiply by 1 it's just going to keep the answer the same. So then I just have to multiply 3 times 40. I know, know 3 times 4 is 12. Add the 0 and put a negative sign on because a positive times a negative is a negative. Let's look at this here. What would I, could I multiply together to make this easier? Well, if I multiply 2 times 15, I get, or negative 15, I get negative 30. And then negative 30 times negative 8, I know a negative times a negative is a positive. And then 3 times 8 is 24. And I add the 0 on the end, so the answer is 240. It makes it so much easier instead of saying 2 times 8 is 16 and then 16 times 15. I have a lot of work I have to do. This I could do in my head. So let's look here and see what we can find. If I multiply um, 5 times 2, I, negative 2, I get negative 10 times 9 times 6 times negative 1. So I know that 9 times 6 is 54, so I have negative 10 times 54 times negative 1, and I know 54 times 10, I'm just going to add a 0 on the end of the 54. I have two negatives, which is going to make this answer a positive, so the answer is 540. So these are just ways that you can use the properties to make your math problems simpler. And I believe that is all for today. So bring your questions to class and we'll help you out. Thanks for listening.